the attendees hanging out, but yeah. okay. Well, we are we are a quorum, so we can as as engaging as talking about air traffic control around New York City is. Um, um, we're going to start. So pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, this meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is being conducted by a remote participation. And judging by how vaccines are beginning to roll out more and more and more, maybe uh, we won't be remote for much longer, he said, hopefully. Uh, this meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast in the town of Amherst, the YouTube channel. Anybody dialing in by phone can press a star nine to raise their hand and be recognized. People with video can click the raise hand button, although we're trying to watch for real hands to see how things are going. Um, <clears throat> all righty, thank you all very much. Oh, hi, Kim. So, sorry about interrupting your dinner. Um, I don't have any announcements. I don't know if anybody has something they might wanna to share as well. And I see no public. Wow. Um, so. Um, Wait, Aaron, uh, I just had yes. a question. Hi, Tracy. Hi. Um, well, I had just heard about that new uh, grant, the, the Mass DOT grant that uh, Amherst just received for the, um, for like the Bangs area. If anybody wants to just mention that, because that seems pretty awesome. I can oh, tell yes, about please. That. Well, Chris. You want me to talk about it? Yes, thank you. So the planning department applied for it, um, and it's a Mass DOT shared streets grant, shared winter streets. But they allowed us to go off the street to apply for um, money to build a ramp that was initially designed by Rob Mora to go from the, part, the upper level of the parking garage at Boltwood Walk down to the entry to the Musanti Health Center. So it goes down that hill where mm. that steep set of stairs is. And it would allow people, you know, who can't really navigate the stairs or who use a wheelchair or a walker to go down there. And it's, um, I think it's gonna be really great. So there's that, and that involves um, a, a little plaza sort of in the middle of the ramp where there's gonna be some seating. And I think it's got some trees and shrubs. And the grant also will pay for some um, site furniture in that plaza that's already part of the Boltwood garage, um, which is that upper level where you never see anybody sitting. But I think in the fall, Guilford put some picnic tables out there and some other kinds of tables and people did sit there. They took out food from, you know, Bueno and places and they um, were able to eat outside there. So we want to do the same kind of thing, but a little bit um, nicer. So we're going to get some special chairs and some of them are going to be like bar stool chairs uh, and tables, which is going to be nice because some people want to stand up while they're eating <laughs> and others can sit down. Um, and there's going to be screening to screen out the wind and yeah. I, oh, and we're also oh. going to redo the crosswalk from um, that goes adjacent to the Douglas Funeral Home when it gets to the point where it crosses mm -hmm. over that driveway that goes into the bank center parking lot, it's hard for cars to see people coming down that sidewalk. So there's going to be, um, the stop sign's going to be moved and there's going to be a more visible crosswalk put there. And I think it's going to have, um, you know, uh, tactile things for people who are blind so that they can feel that they're getting out into the um, crosswalk. I think that's it maybe there's a light um that's part of the ramp i think there might be a light at the turn in the ramp too but anyway it's a really nice project to provide more accessibility and more outdoor dining opportunities in that bangs center area an area light you mean uh, sort of area lighting i think that might be an acorn light um but it depends ben is going to be talking to guilford about whether guilford has any lights lying around the dpw that <laughs> bear or whether we have to buy a new one um so anyway <laughs> do, do acorn lights come in a version that that uh, that's compliant with uh, dark skies i think so <laughs> a little reflector on the top shielded. yeah i think they come shielded 
but that's to be worked out. We had help from Stantec in um, putting this application together and that help was paid for by the um, Solomon Foundation, I believe. Solomon Foundation funds, no, it wasn't Solomon, it was some other foundation, but anyway, some foundation funds Stantec to help cities and towns to apply for these mass DOT grants. Wasn't it the Stanton, Stanton Foundation? No, it wasn't Stanton because that's dog parks. No. Yeah. Now, so Chris, at a previous meeting, you had mentioned that um, you were applying for a grant, I guess it was CDBG money, maybe like on Kellogg, right? To connect from um, Ann Whalen to North Pleasant. But this that's something different. That's not that was something different. Grant. And we didn't get that grant. That was an okay. MOD grant, Mass okay, got it. Office of Disabilities. We, we didn't get that this year, but we got it last year. So we still have, I think, $44,000 to... Um, for Guilford's people or for Guilford to hire some people to put in some crosswalks or better crosswalks in the Kellogg Ave North Pleasant Street area. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. Yeah, thank you. That's, uh, thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Chris. Um, <clears throat> yeah, lots of, lots happening indeed. Um, so I've put, uh, this 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 parking thing that's been rumbling along for a while. Um, I it it it's, it seems to me um, uh, like um, we can get a long way and maybe even get finished with a a a recommendation that we might offer to the TSO um, as a supplement to the uh, the letter that that was included in our packet this week. Um, and the information that Guilford has put together. Um, I don't know, Guilford, I, 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 I didn't talk with you about how we might present this, but I'm wondering if you might um, give us a quick primer on the, um, uh, the history and, and the, the, uh, the provenance of this, um, of your letter and the two charts that came with it. <clears throat> Since we're gonna be maybe modifying them. So um, the current iteration of this process came about with the residents of Lincoln Avenue complaining about parking again. And then the council was asked to do something about it. And there were some offers thrown out there, but then people were like, well, we need to kind of have a, a way to deal with parking throughout the town. So there was a quick discussion of some things and this, what you have in your packet is what came out of that and was presented to sent to the town manager, which was gonna to go to, I believe he was gonna send it to the TSO, which is that's where this, um, the two counselors who are the one counselor who had the issue was kind of having, talking about this issue. So that's basically what this is. And um, it's really kind of a simple concept. You know, if the road's not wide enough, you don't put parking in. Um, but it also <clears throat> addresses it addresses the issues of what do you do for main streets like we have people parking on south pleasant street by the dpw but they're parking in the shoulder that's for buses and bicycles um, but they're parking their vehicles in it so it also addresses those roads as well as being no parking or restricting parking because we want to use it for other things not for parking um, that's kind of where this came from so it, it takes three things into account, what type of road it is, um, what your payment width is, and the traffic flow through that neighborhood or on that street. Um, it was also, I don't know that it was broken out as a separate category, but you had a fourth thing, which is no parking on the round part of a cul-de-sac. So road form is also a well, it's actually that, yes, it's road form. It's also width. When you start going in a circle, the fire trucks can't make the, can't make the turn in the cul-de-sac, which is a problem. And we can't make the turn in the cul-de-sac during a snowstorm if they're parked there. <clears throat> um, so I, I had a, as I was looking at this, I was thinking, is this what's been applied to Lincoln Avenue now? which I notice is mostly no parking over the whole width, the whole length. 
No, what, what's been applied to Lincoln Avenue up to now has been a hodgepodge of which area is complaining about what's, which area complains about the parking. And as people move over the time I've been here, that area has moved left and right, north, south, east, west. Right, so now basically it's, it's no parking all the way down to past Fearing, right? Um, it's no parking, the end, the very end, which is from Fearing to campus is no parking on both sides. And the middle section from Amity to Fearing, that section is no parking on one side. And then there's a couple areas and there was no parking. Actually, no, right now it's just no parking on one side. Yeah, so uh, what I wanted to do is, is, is um, use this as a, an armature to um, offer you know, the, the TAC's recommendations on, well, this, like I say, is a start. Um, <clears throat> and so um, what do you think? Kim? So, so I, um, I liked your letter a lot and it seemed very clear on many instances, but Right, I think you, what was, what was Lincoln classified as? It was a weird like category in your ranking, wasn't it? It actually is um, sort of a minor, Lincoln Art. is a, yeah. Lincoln's a collector. Would, yeah, because it, it's really an interesting case because, because it's, you know, because, well, one thing is it has those speed humps in it, which I don't know how that changes anything on, because you said, well, you know, for certain features in roads, right? Like cul-de-sacs, well, what about speed bumps or whatever those things are? Um, and it, it also has a sidewalk on it, right? Because you mentioned, I, I read it over and I was just, I read over everything of, that you wrote. And then I was thinking about, does this add a lot of clarity to the parking issue, it doesn't really for that particular issue. It, it adds a lot of clarity for guidelines for the rest of town, for you know main roads and things like that. But I was like, but it still doesn't say anything in particular. And maybe that's what you wanted to do. I don't know, <laughs> but um, I yeah. Lincoln is Lincoln. The, Lincoln is the probably. Well, there's actually another road too. I think it's probably North and South South Whitney or the other two roads. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those three roads just serve main, mainly as mainly as collectors, and I think the volume is what is going to drive where we put parking right. on those roads more. Um, which oh, is we don't really. Go I ahead. did notice that you you had had like a an out with the volume, like that's what your letter kind of like seemed to indicate. Like, well, yes, for all these things, but we also have to take into consideration the volume, which I think applies to, to Lincoln for sure, at least, at the very least, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Lincoln is the road that goes in the campus. Yeah. Um, North, um, and South, North and South Whitney are the cut throughs to get around downtown. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, yeah, I just, I just feel like, the, the parking issue there is, is for, especially for cyclists, I mean, it seemed quite like what your letter was suggesting was like, well, if there's a sidewalk, that sidewalks are like, I don't know, this is the feeling I got from your letter. It's sidewalks are kind of like bike paths, but they're, do you agree or not agree? It's, um, it's a place. Amber, just, just uh, can you let Myra in? Thank you. <clears throat> I kind of, it's kind of like that's a, an accommodation that can be used and, and cannot, and doesn't have to be used. It's kind of what the sidewalk is for. Okay, but, yeah. But it definitely gives a place for pedestrians. So pedestrians aren't walking in the road. Certainly that's the case, but then there's bikes. So, so I still, you know, even if there's parking, if there's parking on that street, um, and despite the fact that there's a sidewalk, it's, it's cyclists that really still are, kind of, it, it's dangerous for cyclists still. So, so then you would apply the lane widths. So right. yeah. if you, if you want to have bike pedestrians and you want to give a lane for bicyclists, either on one side or both sides. 
then, then you can act, then you shrink down the pavement and then you're right. like saying, okay, now it's too narrow for parking. Yeah. Right. Well, and so, I, that's, mm -hmm. so maybe that's what town council can decide. And maybe that's what we can offer up because, because I feel like that's one clear, you know, if there's increase, if there's large amounts of vehicular traffic, it also means let in all likelihood, there's also lots of, you know, there, that sidewalk gets used a lot. And there are a lot of people cycling back and forth to work, just like there are lots of cars going back and forth to work there. So, um, you know, maybe that's that, maybe that's a recommendation then that we can forward about this particular circumstance, you know, this particular issue. So I think I tried to outline what I think the issues are with, you know, the regulations that were very clearly, you clearly stated Guilford and kind of like, I think what um, we should be advocating for um, as for the tech is that this, you know, this is the exception because this road is highly traveled particularly. So maybe those are the kinds of things that we can um, just, you know, put as the tack. So that that's it. That's that's an interesting thought, and and sort of my my parallel thought of that is that um, there are some streets on this list here that are arterial um, just because something happened after they were built that drove traffic there. That they really are residential. That somehow now are becoming uh, collectors. I'm sorry, collectors. Could you, could you give an example, Aaron? Sorry. Well, Lincoln Avenue. So Lincoln Avenue, uh, until um, the, the university built their parking lot in a, on that south side of campus there, that was the residential street. And then now that it's got a connection to the university, it becomes a collector for that traffic all going on down there. Um, and that's, you know, I think we're going to see that happening. I don't know if something similar happened up in Heatherstone, right? which is, you know, that was probably envisioned as being residential, but because it went in between two major um, uh, commuter routes, <clears throat> it becomes um, a collector. And, and actually it is a collector in any event, but it becomes almost arterial. So, um, <clears throat> It's it's interesting that um, you know it is so. What, what I'm I'm wondering, um, Kilford, and well, whether lane width is the right um, uh, criterion for determining whether it's an arterial or a collector or something else, and really whether it is um, how it's being used, because Lincoln um, is, is is Lincoln. Uh, is Lincoln 10 feet wide? Is the travel lane 10 feet wide? Um, they're, Just as, they're, as close, they, they're, they're about, they're, they're around 11 is what they are. They, so they make it. Okay. But if there's a bike, if there's also, if a bike lane is included, then it doesn't make, you know. Right. And if, and if we hold to, we want to have a, a firm width for parking and you say you want 78 feet for parking, then, then you don't have enough room period in there. So then that's, that's where you can kind of say you don't want parking. Yeah, because, because also as even, even as a, you know, I occasionally drive a car on that road because it leads to my home. And if there are cars parked, you know, it effectively, if there's car par cars parked on one side, it effectively becomes a one way road. And, and then that would be fine if it was just serving a residential, right. um, not, not a collector for a, a large university. I mean, is there a reason why we can't make it one way? Yes. <laughs> you, but you know, that, I mean, that's, that's the other thought process you can, we should think about is, okay, it, does, it hits these criteria, but if we want parking and we want to have um, traffic on it is going to be this type of road. Yes, maybe we should think about making it one way. So that does this yeah. does kind of trigger those types of thoughts to come through your come through. Because there are parallel roadways that could go one way the other way, right? Yes. There are. So we could have one way versus the other if they want parking, or if they don't want well, parking. And, well, and you know, but then, but sometimes when you have one way streets like that, it speeds up the traffic. I mean, even though we have the traffic 
like just the race. A bit more areas. traffic calming. Yeah. I just well, so and that 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 becomes that sort of a, a level of for dealing with the problem that that we really haven't got to, and that's to consider a number of roads together as part of the network. So if if you make it one way, someplace else you have to make something the other way, um, just to maintain the circulation. And now you've got you think about two roads, and before and then plus the on the ends, you know. So it's it's a which is something um, I think that we do. Uh, but I don't know now. Now that we've brought it up, I don't know how to to put that into this discussion. Well, I think that the other, you know, as as so, and, and now I'm speaking as someone who lives in these neighborhoods, right? <laughs> you know, no one. I I I am certain that that would also not please the the neighborhood to make those streets one way because because in in the end, you know, parking. It, there's no reason, I mean, there's really not, not a lot of reason why people are parking there other than using it as a secondary, as avoiding using UM, the UMass parking as parking. That's really, the, that become, that's the real issue, you know, in the end. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of people that say that they, you know, that's the case, but then is a lot of that, is it just, I should say, are there cases where it is local residents just parking on the street because their driveway is too full. Yeah, sometimes when people yes. have parties, but that's in the evening, you know, it's after commuter. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't really matter what time of day yeah. it is. It's like, is this happening? Yes, and it does right. happen. And, and you yeah. know, well, it parties. happens in lots of neighborhoods, right? Well, yeah, 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 we'll yeah, yeah no, I know. Events. But I'm just, I mean, because the easiest thing would be to say absolutely no parking and then people will get annoyed no. when yeah, like people that. get towed because it's late at night and they're parking on the street because they decided to have a few friends over. Yeah. Um, and, and also uh, other parking includes uh, contractors, people that are working for um, yeah. you know, homeowner. At a, at a place, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, that, that sort of thing, you can provide some means, you know, get out of jail free cards, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, I feel a little bit like we could focus. Wait a minute. Um, yes, you are. That we could um, just thinking strictly about the parking right now and not about turning stuff into one way. Right. Because that's <laughs> like a totally different can of worm. I mean, it's related, but um, yeah. But I think well, that those can be. I mean, those can be like bigger discussions about. Well, in, in what cases should um, roadways become <clears throat> one-way roadway? And I do think, I mean, seriously, there can be unintended impacts of those changes, both well, for the people who live in the neighborhood, well, but then also in terms of the traveling speeds, that traveling yeah. speeds can definitely be much higher in run on one-way situations. Yeah. Well, I think your point is well taken that it's a different level of analysis to begin to link together streets and do the one-way stuff. Bruce. I was just wondering if some of this would also hinge on the the amount of space to allow a lane for a bike lane, because if, if we really feel that's important on some of these roads and that would then preclude parking, that might solve that issue right away. Well, so that's that's an interesting um, question. What the lens or a lens that this doesn't have yet really is the complete street lens. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, we, it, it, we sort of deal with traffic and road form and the size of the lane, but not, you know, does parking then preclude it from being a complete street? <clears throat> That's a really I, good point, Aaron. Well, and I think, I mean, I, I like the way Guilford outlines like the kind of main criteria in terms of to consider with parking, but if we look at the last page, right, his next steps, like there, I definitely feel like there's some other factors that we'd want to be considered that should be considered in terms of where parking is allowed. And um, in terms of this issue, I mean, it sounds like we are agreeing about the cul-de-sac, so maybe that could even be like moved up in into <laughs> something that's like proved or like that we agree with. Um, and also like the number four restrict parking on arterial roadways to s designated areas only. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, I think the issue, you know, if I'm 
if we're thinking about parking in specific neighborhoods, like the issue of the sight lines is a really big one in terms of the safety for the people in the neighborhood, the pedestrians, the cyclists, you know, the people pulling out of their driveways, it, it's big. And so I, I don't know if, I mean, we could have these general guidelines. Um, but I mean, I've done a lot of research on, you know, and looking at um, situations where people are most at risk for getting hit or for cars, like in terms of unseen hazards for cyclists, pedestrians, drivers, and so on. And the sightline issue is huge. I mean, um, I mean, the driving simulator lab I worked at, we had all kinds of scenarios based on Amherst examples, like Lincoln and Amity and things like that. I mean, just where if you can't see stuff, if you, if you don't have full views, there's a lot more risk. So, um, I mean, maybe we don't know the details to incorporate that, but I think that that could definitely be some criteria too. Like in terms of you have road slopes and then you also just have like the density and other related factors. Right, and, and that, that part of that, like at least the driveway piece, I saw that Guilford tried to incorporate that as exceptions in his, um, in his- yeah, he's, He talked about it as next steps, but yeah. I know like from the people from Lincoln who, and Sunset maybe too, who've come to the TAC meetings, right? They're always really concerned about the safety of pulling out of their driveways. Yeah, that makes sense. And so. So at, uh, um, at Guilford, for, for Bruce's uh, suggestion, actually, I, for, I didn't even think about it. We could actually, in the, when we start talking about pavement widths, we could look at each type of roadway and actually put another column in there for bike accommodations. So we have lane width, two-way traffic, parking. We could add bike lane. Oh, yeah. I think that's we could put, good. We could, right. we could have like yep. four to five for arterials and collectors, and then or to shared roadway for locals. And that'd be kind of how I'd lay it out. Yeah. I think that's good. Good that idea. And, and is there some way of incorporating the consideration for the complete streets? Um, it, it, in effect, you know, we've just done that by adding another column. Right. Um, it's, it's completer anyway, um, but, but um, not, not to be flipped, Bruce, I'm sorry, I don't, don't mean to be flipped, but um, Complete Streets includes a number of other things like bus stops and- That's what uh, I was thinking. And also yeah. uh, enough space on each side, or at least one side for a sidewalk. Yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. in, the, in the right of way, within the, the, the public way, right? Correct, yes. Well, and then also the consideration in streets without sidewalks, like do we treat the parking on street parking differently on those streets than on streets with sidewalks? Well, that's true too. That would be true of Heatherstone, which, you know, as our, our subcommittee walked there and, and the residents were asking for, even a painted lane on the street to indicate to drivers that people might be walking on this lane. So that, that would relate to something like that. Um, yeah, I wonder if we couldn't also maybe in our suggestion also include, you know, something about adherence to um, the complete streets, like, You're, yes. lines, you know? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the question, it's, it's not now sort of an interesting question is how and um, adding adding uh, maybe a, a yet another column saying com completeness. So now see the <laughs> complete street and, compliance or something. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's 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 kind of wonderfully nuanced because a complete street doesn't necessarily have a separate piece for all of the the four things. Um, you know, in a neighborhood, it's probably fine to have the bike the bikes share the road. Um, so, um, yeah. Some of the cul-de-sacs, pedestrians on the cul-de-sac, you know, walking in the street, that's fine too. I mean. The right, walking by, because okay, a cul-de-sac, and that's, that's um, you know, I don't know if there's a neighborhood, well, um, if any neighborhood road, we could, we could sort of allow that to be. 
Um, um, <clears throat> okay. Oh, good. Thank you. That, that's that's good. I, I'm I'm hoping that's even helpful. Um, so, Guilford, I was on a different subject. Going back to the sight lines, I was a little surprised that um, there weren't like absolute limits on distance from an intersection and how you define an intersection gets interesting that you can park, how close to an intersection you can park. Um, I mean, it, it's, you, you mention it kind of, but you know, I'd be an advocate for saying, you know, 30 feet from the, from the intersection, no parking. It doesn't matter if the intersection is a big road or a little road. Um, and then it does matter if it's a driveway or not, maybe. Um. <clears throat> now, I mean, don't the current um, restrictions on Lincoln have some of those? Like when I've looked yeah. at the maps, right, they, they have yeah. some. Yeah, on Lincoln, they do, but right. there's not a general no, of course. guideline that says you're not going to, no parking within 25 feet. And now um, maybe enforcement requires painting a stripe there so that, because not everybody carries a tape measure in their car and knows that they're going to be parking more or less close, but. Um, you, you're talking a lot of paint. Yeah, I don't think it's start. realistic yeah. to paint all over town. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about the, the, the town in New Jersey where, where we spend time. Um, they've got every driveway has a yellow box around it and every wow. oh. uh, intersection has a yellow line that, uh, that indicates where you uh, uh, you can and can't park, and every bike path has a uh, bike lane is a, 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 a bright green color, except near an intersection, the color changes when you come to an end. I, I mean, it, you know, they've got not a lot of, they don't have a lot of work to do uh, other than paint. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I mean, well, at least I'm surprised there's no, um, there are no driveway distance stand. to park near a stop sign. I thought that was. At least down in the south, that was the case. You couldn't park within so many feet of the stop sign. And that's why they paint everywhere. Or put a sign. It wouldn't necessarily need to be paint. Well, there, we'll are, there are so Guilford parking signs on Lincoln, for example, where it intersects with um, Amity and with, is it Route, whatever the other one on the other side is? Yeah. I haven't gone to check other neighborhoods, but you know, on Blue Hills and Dana, do they also do they have those signs? Some some do, some don't. Right. But I mean they're not necessarily related to the intersection that much. But yeah. yeah. I mean, Northampton, this is kind of a local thing in Massachusetts. Like Northampton has one. It says no parking with thirty within thirty feet of an intersection. Mm. Um, the question is, though, how do you measure that? We, we interpreted it one way and we just kept interpreting it that way and it worked. But um, I mean, some people think the intersection begins at the edge of the pavement where the pa edge, edge of the pavement starts to transition to the next road. So you measure back 30 feet. Um, and that's what we used. Um, and, and that works as a good general guideline, but it doesn't work everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, this, well, this I mean, is a I, guideline. Yeah. Would be, yeah. I mean, as a guideline, it could just be included. And of course, there's always exceptions to everything. So, I mean, I mean for example, if you had deep. if you had something with steep slope or something, you wouldn't you would have a different map distance. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, Guilford, um, I, I want to kind of wrap this up and get on to our next thing because some of us have to to leave a little bit quickly, and I want to get started on the map as well. Um, um, do, do, uh, do you want to build that new column and, and, and figure out how to, um, incorporate the complete streets into these criteria? I mean, I, we could do that. I'm sure it would take us a lot longer though than you. Well, the column's already in, everything's over here. Look at, look at that done already. Um, uh -huh. complete, yeah, great. Uh, Thank you. The complete so, streets thing, I think, is going to be harder even for me to incorporate it in because the goal is not to 
the goal is not to re redo everything on the street, but to look at what's there. Yeah. Um, like if we were doing a whole new project and we're tearing up the road, yes, putting complete streets in is easier. But since we're really just not trying to tear up the road, we're just trying to put everything in the space. Um, let me let me think about that. Yeah, I mean, really, a starting point would be to say that that needs to be considered. Complete streets needs to be part of the parking consideration. It's not explicitly in the policy, but it does affect how the policy is applied to a space. And that, that would be the starting point. Then, as you say, then the decisions could be made about, you know, how we do it in this spot. I, yeah, I, well, I mean, I think you could just include like a, a sentence in your letter, Guilford, um, that might just, you know, just like you kind of like put an asterisk for, you know, volume of traffic, you should also put an asterisk for you know, <laughs> complete streets. Yeah. Or, I mean, I think there can also be just a list of like other considerations or something. Like, for example, I think about um, like adjacent land uses, like, for example, like what if it was like near a school or yeah. something or I mean, there's just there's always going to be some other types of factors that, you know, if whoever is making these decisions has any discretion, those are things that they could consider because every street is a little different so let me let me play around with that thank you do you yes, want thank you but like the bike lane is too yeah so, 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 so darcy add, sorry yeah, i'm sorry Gilford. You, you go ahead you also want to add the third thing being we, you got you, you really want to recommend a minimum of 30 feet back from intersections i'm gonna uh, i like that as a general rule um, I would agree with that. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, it's just safe. That's safety. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's cl clearly, uh, you know, where the thirty feet is measured from, and whether it ends up being twenty five feet where the sign gets put or the line gets painted, that really is a a, a local judgment. I, mean, I think that's acceptable. If there's a local judgment on that. Um, so so Darcy, I had a, a sort of a question in, in wrapping up. Um, what is the form that of this, as a, like I say, as a starting point, this letter would be most useful to the TSO uh, when they're doing their work uh, regarding these things? I think it's probably more of a question for the sponsors who are George, Dorothy and George. Okay. Um, Although Dorothy just left TSO, so I'm not sure exactly what that means. She probably still wants to sponsor this, but- well, It's um, still in our neighborhood, so. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, this sounds fantastic, what you're discussing tonight. And I, I just really appreciate all the input from this committee and, and Guilford's work on this, it, it seems like really cool. <laughs> and I think that the um, once you finalize what you're doing, Guilford, um, I know TSO would like to, to uh, you know, have a presentation. I mean, this is going to be going through George and Dorothy. But, um, but I, you know, I think this is just, this is going to be very interesting to TSO. And I, I guess TAC will be able to give their expertise too and make a recommendation if it comes to, um, I'm assuming that George is, you know, he's moving toward um, helping the town uh, finalize some kind of a policy on this. So uh, we'll, we'll We'll Should see I... how it goes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that it looks like Guilford's going to amend what he's done here and maybe bring it back to TAC, or I don't know what the next step is. You're welcome to to uh, bring it to TSO, but I would say go through George because he's the George and Dorothy. They're the sponsors. Um. So uh, should should I reach out to them or Guilford? 
to get that final sort of uh, idea about what the form is and for instance what the presentation might be as well i think that i think that george has, is directly communicating with guilford through paul which is the way we do things yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um so i think it's in process um but you know it would be good if you were all copied on everything you know, so that everybody knows what's going on. That would be nice. Okay, good, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, good, well, uh, so I'd like to go on to the, to uh, before we lose some folks to, uh, to begin to uh, continue our work on the map. Which Guilford had got queued up earlier, so. Uh -huh. I can actually make it a little. Yeah, you, you can zoom in so we can see the next the next band that we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> which is. Where do you want to go next? Uh, just the next section, next piece south, sort of inch our way down. So now, have have any changes been made to the underlying map yet? I mean, to the map yet? Or no, do, you, do you have your intern back? He does. He's busy doing uh, lead lead lines. Uh, do we have many of those? Um, no, no. Oh. That, 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 that's another topic. I mean. It, 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 one is too many, I understand, but I'm just, just I was, that was, not, I was curiosity. Can Guilford remind us of what the colors mean here? Or maybe Kim? <laughs> so the colors are down at the very bottom. So the blue line is a biking network. A red line is a walking network. And the ones that look kind of purplish have a blue line and a red line. And are these oh. proposed or are these existing? These, I believe, are. I, I would say they're proposed, both. I think. Or, I think but it's they proposed include and existing. And they include the proposed the proposed and existing. Includes existing. Yes. They're saying that these are the major corridors, and then some of them have facilities already, and some don't. So we had would have to go to another map to figure out what actually exists, right? It's it's in the report. I see. Well, and, and actually, so Chris, if you look like up towards the top of the map, the part we edited first, like there's a bunch of thing networks that are getting removed because they don't actually reflect like key parts of the biking, walking. What, what yeah, what we're considering biking yeah. or pedestrian. Like if you look at this stuff up near Leverett, like some of those are like footpaths that aren't actually that, network per se. That yeah. reminded me, I have a question for you, Guilford. What happened to the Armco on Pine Street? Or the, what? the wire strands? Are we expecting people oh. to be caught by the trees? Or are we... Um, you the know, guardrails? The guardrails. We're kind of hoping that we can set some Guinness World Records there. <laughs> no, there's just... It's in the process of having someone come in and replace them. It's just... Okay. Uh, it's just in a, a budget thing and it's farther down the budget line. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It's just the, the trees aren't as big as they used to be since they've all fallen down. So I don't know if they're going to catch the cars like you're hoping. So. There was a lot of work going on there this afternoon, I noticed. On Pine Street? Yeah. I didn't get close enough to see what it was, but... We, we had some big trees fall in that area. Yeah, so so to, to recap on this, the uh, the walking trails up there around okay. Buffers Pond and heading up to Leverett, those won't be here anymore because they're not part of the uh, pedestrian getting from point A to point B yes. uh, network. They're, they're recreational. Uh, I think we got down, did we get down to um, Fine Street? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. All in, all in large. Um, 
I think one other one other thing we decided was that that um, yeah, what is it that um, Cushman? There's a currently a, yeah that needs to be a purple line. I think that's where we decided. It's currently currently yeah. has a, yes. It currently has a sidewalk, a really <coughs> sidewalk, but it it should be a purple line because it connects two major kind of roadways. Um, and I think we were headed down more into um, the neighborhoods next. So Guilford, I, I'm sorry, but I don't really know the names of these streets. So could you, could you amplify it a little more? Is it possible? There is no street names. Oh, I thought there were. Oh, yeah. actually, yeah, there is. Yeah, there are. You, I just can't. Okay, good. And so could we go, yeah, here. I think we had finished with uh, a North Ham the North Amherst, where is the that red dot is that says North Amherst, and I think we concurred that that purple line should remain a purple line. I was just curious, actually, in in reviewing this, why that purple line doesn't extend through because that's still Amherst, right? It is actually there's there's a bike shoulder there's bike there's shoulders for bike lanes all the way to the intersection. Well, so that should be purple then, right? Yes. Maybe not all the way to the intersection, but certainly to the oh to the um to Brandywine Drive there. We, we actually that? well we had talked about last time about putting the that. footpath all the way out to the thing. Yeah. yeah. I take that back. It should be all yeah. the way out. It should be all it's on, the, it's on it's on my notes. Okay, yeah. thank you. And, um I think we oh so the so this intersection is the what is that street? This one? Yeah. The oh, metal street? That goes north south. That's this the one, one that's 116. No, I'm sorry. To the oh, oh, to the right. That is um North Pleasant Street. North Pleasant, yes. Yeah. So why is that not purple? They don't think the shoulder is wide enough. I mean, it's wide enough in here to about this point, and then it narrows down and it's pretty tight until you get back towards campus, and then it widens out around campus. So it's too, it's really too narrow for the bike. But does that, would that be the, but, the case with the plan that you guys have put together? Um, when the plan we're working on now doesn't add a bike lane on North Pleasant oh, okay. because that requires a lot, of, a lot more work. But, but it includes a multi-use path though, right? Right, that's what well, I use by. Well, actually, sorry. The blue, the blue is biking. So they're saying this is a biking network now. They left out the red for the sidewalk. Right, and and but, but I mean, it is a major corridor, like with I mean, all the dense housing and everything. Really, almost it should be pedestrian all the way to the university. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's oh, existing. There are it should be. Today. It should be purple all the way to town, <laughs> really. And then to town, right? Yeah, I mean. It, it is once you get past the university. Right. Yeah. But there are existing footpaths there today. But also, I mean, in terms of you know right. having a network, it's a critical part of the network. Uh -huh. It is. I concur. So purple. Right. It so should be purple the whole way. Purple all the way. This is Bass Ave. Right. That and then it, it continues to be, right? Yeah. Yep. It goes. Yes. Could it be like a purple slash line in cases in which it will in the future be fully operational with the bike lanes in, in the sidewalk, but right now, you know, with the multi-purpose path, but right now we haven't yet achieved that. Yes. That might be a level of detail that's not for this map. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, it should be effectively. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. It should be. And, and isn't that what this map is? What? Well, but so to put a purple and a blue line or a red and a blue line together, I think that's that serves the purpose of this map of saying it right. needs to be there it needs to be it does need to be yeah. yeah and then the detail how it ends up is that's the next step so i i would agree i mean even though we have no apparent jurisdiction through umass i mean it, it should be both yes well no, we do is, i would agree this is our road this is a right. town road right so so let's let's connect the purple all the way up. Yeah, I to agree. North Amherst, and when we get back there, also to, to Summer Street. Yeah. I think Could straight we... out down down to North Amherst. Yeah. And then go over. 
to um, the east a little bit. bit no. To the east. Yes. So let's let's focus on um, the. I don't know what pleasant this is. What pleasant are we on now? That's east pleasant. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and ideally, certainly that should also be purple. Yes. I, I'm very curious as to why the um, route through the neighborhoods is both. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Oh, that's there a good actually, point. There actually is no sidewalk. So you, you're walking it's, on the road. And that would be, the Eve is straight. not here to, to set us straight, but I, I think the Kim is right yeah. that, um, that is a shared that that is a neighborhood road. Yeah, it's, Eve is it, here. I mean, Eve is here. But that is oh, Eve is here. Hi, Eve. It's a beautiful road, but unfortunately, um, that piece through um, I can also see where it's it's bisecting the the um, town the cent, town center line below that to the south. Um, that is that's a um, just a path through yes. the UMass essentially. So yeah, that should guys, go away. That should go. Did you, guys, did you guys not get the map that I sent out? Because I had corrected it on the map that I sent out. Well, this is After. the official map that we're trying to alter. Oh, because do you remember two two times ago when we met and we were doing right. this? I was taking all the detailed notes on the map, and I sent that one with all my detailed notes out to all of you. That's funny. I don't think I got that. I remember that, but okay. and let me um. That was a oh, while there, back. There, 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 there were two. He, he did send out a map with some corrections on with it. With your notes and stuff. That's yeah. not the one that we're using. Yeah. This is oh well, we should. <laughs> so yeah. yes, so we're we're disconnecting um, Ridgecrest from Hobart. No, I'm sorry, from Presidential. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, for both bicycling and pedestrianing. Um, wait, 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 this, this little presidential, path. what's presidential? A presidential, presidential apartment. Drive. Presidential, I think. Oh. Residential. Yeah. Um, That's just a can I, in the woods. Can I weigh in on this? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, because this is my neighborhood. So um, first of all, the geography of this map is a little bit wrong, this path. Um, so um, let's see where... Um, do you see on Rolling Ridge where the curve goes furthest south? That's where the path connects to Harlow Drive. No, you're too far to the west. Go to the, go further east there, there, that point, that's where it connects to Harlow Drive. Right, and town meeting accepted that as a, as a roadway, didn't they? Or something? Yes, it's owned, it's owned by the town, and so that should absolutely be put in there as a walking path. Right. And not a recreational. It's not recreational. It's it's pedestrian. Is it tarmac or is it? It's it's not tarmac. It's just wood chips. Does that make it recreational? It's not. I mean, it's a walking path that everybody uses, and it's owned by the. Town. Yeah, I'm. I'm just thinking like, can we count it as being a walking, a proper walking path? Because well, it could potentially be. You know, access issues for people with uh, wheelchairs and stuff. Yeah. So, so Marcus, well, it's I mean, more it's... of a question of whether we want it to be. What? Well, right. Right. It's, it's, yeah. That's it's, true. It becomes yeah. one. Exactly. And it's it would more... have to be made accessible. Yeah. Because, because as far as I can tell, all this is is like, uh, you know, informal walking, biking paths, right? Um, yeah. All... But there... And so it doesn't really belong on the network map. Well, the reason the network map um, matters, even if it's not currently accessible, is because the network map is going to be used to um, prioritize what projects happen in the future. So this is a network map of what we want to build toward, not just what we have now. Yes, that's exactly what we're discussing, but this will never really be, I mean, there will never really be a road through UMass, right? I mean, that will not. So oh, well, I want to I'm going to interrupt here just for a second. This is a great discussion. And I want to finish it, but I know some of us are leaving right now. And I just wanted to say that uh, the next thing that we're doing on the uh, the agenda 
uh, briefly after this, uh, what I've called outline in the intersection decision guide. Um, but that's what, what, what you're missing. Whoever's leaving now is gonna be missing is basically trying to outline how we're going to take our decision on, um, on the, the Pomeroy project, uh, Pomeroy oh. Village project uh, next time. Um, I just, just wanted to tee it up so that we have um, a running start for that. Um, just, otherwise, um, the other stuff is pretty mundane. Yes, Darcy. Yeah, I just wanted to, if some people are leaving, I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that the, the public forums on Pomeroy are going to be at the TSO meeting on the 25th. The second hour of it is going to be a public forum um, at six o'clock that day. And then on Saturday, the 27th, from two to 4 p.m. And we don't, we haven't quite figured out the format of it yet. I'm gonna to talk to Paul about it tomorrow, but um, I know that there is uh, a desire to have it be more than just, you know, a presentation and then just public comment without any give and take. So I think it's gonna be question and answer type format, and but just restricted to the issue of roundabout versus uh, signalized intersection. Right, and so I what I was hoping is that uh, the TAC on our meeting right before that, which is what the 18th, um, that we'd have a chance to uh, put something together that we could bring to that that meeting. Um, and that's and I wanted to outline that, you know, a little bit later today, so that we can get some good work on that next time. Is there going to be so, some more detail in the design available? Um, what ifs. I don't think so, uh, uh, but that's a question for Guilford, I think. Or yeah, also the, we can get out current, of the current conditions of the, the current conditions are. Um, well, so Guilford and I are working on that. We're working with Dave Zomek and um, I think the format is gonna be a little different than we initially expected. Um, although Paul may, I, I'm not sure what he'll say to Darcy tomorrow, but. What we talked about today was <clears throat> having these forums be more um, information gathering from the public. Like, what do you think is wrong with the intersection? What are the problems here? Um, what do you think might be good solutions to some of the problems? And so it's really eliciting um, information and comments from the public rather than presenting them with choices. Is yeah, that's, that's like, my understanding mm -hmm. of the direction that we're going with these formats or with these forums. Yeah, that that makes that makes some sense because mm -hmm. you, you do want it one once you want to come up with a design that meets the most criteria and offers the, the best solution. So yeah, if you get and, and I would again suggest that um, there be some kind of meeting uh, at that intersection so that people have a chance to really experience it. Um, so that's it. Because I'm, I'm I'm the I'm the person who has to leave. So. <laughs> I'll say uh, say good night and thank you to everybody. Thank you, Bernie. Bye, Bernie. Uh, Bye, Bernie. Thank you. All right, Kim. Yes. We, I, I interrupted you. No, no, no. It's okay. Bob, um, back to this issue of that um, current like foot footpath um, uh, that that goes from essentially from UMass back to um, Eve's neighborhood, Van Meter. Um, I don't think that. I don't think that belongs on this um, map. Agreed. <laughs> um, Agreed. Nor should it also be on um, the residential streets through mm -hmm. through the neighborhood back there. You mean the one and between you... Rolling Ridge and Harlow? Yeah. And there's also why do you think because that, Kim? well, um, because we're talking about networking, um, you know, through town. That's all that this map is. Mm -hmm. Right, and that, that's, it, it seems to me, and, and, and this is, uh, uh, would be the way I would phrase the question is that there's a desire, there's a, there's a strong yeah. place that people are coming from and going to, going to the university, coming from that, that neighborhood um, that is served very nicely by this um, in a non-automotive way. Um, and that might be a, a, a piece of the network that we would want to aspire to. 
And I know it's not, it's not right now. It's not, you know, it's not a bicycle path. It's not paved. It's not it's supported in any way, but it is a town road or a town way. It's a town way. It's not a road. It's not a town. Yeah. It's a town way. And that um, I, I, it looks like it'd be a valuable place for the network to be um, extended to. Extended. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I would agree we, with I got... that too. Yeah, I mean that this map is what you might call aspirational, right? I mean it's what we hope for. Mm -hmm. A good word, Bruce. I, I that's exactly be, right. Yeah. yeah, I think it'd be appropriate to include it. Gilford, can you move up the the map down a little bit so we can get a better view of Van Meter and company and all that stuff? It, I don't know okay. if you're able, but I just emailed everyone the map that we put together a couple That's weeks ago. Again. Oh, good. Thank it's you. Detail. I was looking detail. for it. Great. Um, well, I mean, the, the, uh, yeah. So, so in the end, I mean, it's a night, it's, it's nice, but I feel like it doesn't necessarily belong on the final map. And this might be something that people who came to the um, looking sessions, you know, agreed with. Um, but I'm not sure it's, you know, in our interest to like make that particular path a, um, a way on this map. Because really what we're trying to do, right, is connect, is, you know, integrate the streets with biking and pedestrian ways. Isn't that what the purpose is of this? That's certainly one of the things that we would aspire to do, yes. Um, and it's interesting, you're right. This is a different category of, uh, of uh, we would have to do something different here to create the network than we would in any other place that we've talked about so far. Right. That's, yeah. that's we true. We have to say, yeah. Um, I mean, I had thought it would be good to put it in for a pedestrian path, but not as a biking path. Um, and as someone who lives in this neighborhood, I'm opinionated about which things could get put on here and which should not. Like, um, and Rob Kustner incidentally um, uh, sent me comments on this and he thinks that it should be on there. There should also be a cut through that the town owns between Pine that kind of goes through the farm. Oh yeah. Um, and he also thinks we should have the connection between Rolling Ridge and Hobart on our, our our network map. And personally, as someone who lives in the neighborhood, I would say do not put the Rolling Ridge to Hobart Lane connection on the network map. Um, and I would say don't put these routes as bikeable um, because they're not all bikeable, but I think they're legitimate as walking right. paths. Okay, and so, like so let's them. do that. Let's put that as a as just a blue line then. I, I mean, I, I that's what I was actually, I mean, to me, the thing that I was having the most issue with was on that particular path was thinking like, it's not, it's, it will never be, I mean, I can bike on it, but I'm not sure everyone can bike on it and it will never be that yeah. way, you know? I agree. So, yeah. I so agree. it's a red line, I think in this, this map. Is it red? I thought it, I, yeah. Walking is red, yeah. Oh, right, red, okay. so just red. <laughs> so that would be great. Okay, so I think we've decided on that and let's go to, um, and obviously we we all agree that East, the, the remainder of East, is it East Pleasant? I always get these. East Pleasant. Should continue as purple. Yes. North Downtown. Pleasant. That's North Pleasant over there. North, no, this oh, one. No. Right. Yeah, both, both of them should be red. Yes. I mean, yeah, both should be red. decided that red and blue. The, um, North Pleasant should be purple all the way through. But I'm talking about East Pleasant, the one on the right. Yep, that's, that's yep. great. And can we just go to the right a little more, please? OK. And so Henry Street is um, also um, labeled as a blue. I mean, the, the, the issue is here, you know, it's a great connector, um, but it, there are very few um, uh, houses on it. And so pedestrian wise, I also, I concur with the blueness um, yeah. through most of this. So, and is that all? Can we, is there anything more to write? I think we're done, right? That's good. Yep. Yeah. Wait. So what? Wait. So with Henry Street, though. So I mean, it is. If cyclists are going in that direction, though, 
like what are we proposing if you're going from North Amherst like over to like the Fort River area? I mean, Henry is like your only choice. Yes, but this is blue as bike. Blue as bike, okay. Yeah. yeah, so there is no proposal as to well, what and I mean, if it. and if we're on Northeast Street, right? Northeast Street is not pedestrian friendly. I mean, no. that's where the pedestrian was killed, and there's no right. right. So that, that would be unrealistic to say you could walk along there safely. Well, and and also, I mean, you can just look at the density of housing there. I mean, I feel like it's not very, it's you know amenable to um, I mean I guess one question would be whether to make a connection if we keep going south on northeast street towards the intersection like whether to make the part whether to make any of this part walkable like for example if you were going to Wildwood from over well yeah. strong from like the Fort River there's area there's a, do you uh, make Strong domain certainly should be read as well. On yeah, uh, I would concur with that. Yes. I would think strong domain. Yes, yes, I agree. But there, there is already a footpath from northeast terrace down to yeah like Pelham Road. Right. Does it yeah. go that far? Idea? Yeah. No, right. there isn't. There isn't. There, there is. There's a footpath. No, Does it make it all the way there? Further, further, further south. Oh, maybe not. No, no, it's like basically where that red line is, is where yeah. that footpath starts. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bef before you guys go on, just to go back to Henry for a sec, I just wanted to make sure when we had our conversation before, we said that Henry in that triangle between um, Cushman and uh, what's it called? A bridge? That that's... Yes have a pedestrian way. We added it. But yeah. it currently okay. is. It currently is a pedestrian way. Great, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it actually has a sidewalk on it. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's really small. Yes, so, it's very small. So, right, it, so, yeah. So we're making Maine to strong um, purple. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and so we're also making, yeah, from, main to strong purple. And then um, I'm curious why the rest of um, Redgate, where Redgate goes to North Whitney, why that is also not continued as purple. That is a pedestrian. Well, there's it no sidewalks. Yes, but... Why wouldn't we also aspire yes. to have bikes on that street as well? I would agree with that. So yeah, that and that clearly you know connects the areas that we're, we're are important to connect. I'm wondering if uh, it would be uh, too wild to propose that the red not come down on uh, North Whitney, but came down on High Street instead. Um, do you think that has something? Yeah, that's a good point because it's also the schools. Um, but I don't, I don't know about if there are currently sidewalks on, I don't remember. Yeah, there are. I, there may not there be, but as far as there building are. the network, that yeah. that's where the sidewalks or the provision might go is along High Street to take what would otherwise be the North Whitney Street traffic. Uh, just, just an idea. <clears throat> I mean, it, it's, we're, we're putting lots of biking and pedestrian things together. And this looks like a place where I they mean, might we might consider having them apart. North Whitney might be better just because of the potential pedestrian traffic to the high school, right? Well, this high street is very is, is good for that too. Yeah, That's the thing. I'm sorry, high street. Yeah, my, I, I'm I get, yeah. So, I mean, if we identify, if we're making this um, from like strong, like all the way down to Maine on. Um, North Whitney and things that we're making it part of the biking network. I, I get I'm a little concerned that I mean in terms of like corridors to different parts of town like I do think that that is a big walking path right and they use it on the the different like 5ks and things like that but if we identify too many things as purple then I'm afraid that like we'll lose like what we think is like the most important in terms of the corridors for the biking and walking network. That's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I mean, I might not even name like the Red Gate. There's nothing special about Red Gate like this from the 
from the village center bubble like up to strong i might not even name that specifically as like a bike route oh just leave it pedestrian i mean just those are hugely important pedestrian corridors but it doesn't seem yeah. as significant as a oh, bike i agree you're right network. oh that's 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 yeah I think that's a good point. I would agree with that too. Take, take the blue out completely and just make it all red. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Although and then I let, guess let, the, let bikes be part of the automotive traffic. Is, I mean, is that, is that um, for the entire length of Redgate? Yeah. Well, and, and Redgate actually goes to the right. I don't know what that, that street that connects to Strong is. I don't know what that one is, but Redgate is, goes, is that white one. Yeah, hitching post. Yes, this is uh, this is uh, hills. Yeah, yeah, that's hills, and that's right. But we, I mean, Eve, do you think that that's important to keep it as a biking route? Um, I mean, I, I, I would be inclined to keep it as a biking route, but keep in mind that in the prioritization scheme, as we've set up the level of service, right? If the traffic isn't going very fast, that we wouldn't have to actually do any improvements to make it a biking route. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm, right. And, and certainly the way that that street doesn't have really high volume traffic. The one reason I could imagine keeping it as a biking route is because certainly kids from that neighborhood ride their bikes to school and okay. it would be through you know right where that purple line is through that neighborhood well and that that was, level uh, of was... bicyclists though might uh, reasonably be expected to share the way with pedestrians yeah. mm -hmm. but, but but then where that's regional really is isn't there a, there is a cut through right right, right where regional no yeah. oh is it down that far down yeah There's one down yeah. Here. Right, down there, yeah. right yeah, yeah. I think there's an informal one under the regional down the hill. They come down the hill there. Um, I was going to say that actually thinking of those inexperienced and children bicyclists is, an, uh, is another reason to keep it on the map because yeah. that's going to have implications for what kind of sidewalk we want. Um, it's going to mean we want a, a six foot sidewalk that can, that can have bikes and peds. And, and that might, you know, I think that is the reason why this is purple just for that short segment, you know, that because that's the reasonable getting to the elementary school. That's oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and so maybe it's red further to the south instead of yeah. blue. Yes, correct. Um, right. So well, on, now it should be red, I think. Well, you know what? What what we were talking about before also was having three different categories, right? The strong bicyclists, the inexperienced bicyclists, and the pedestrians. So what I'm hearing is that you don't really care about the strong bicyclists here; they can deal with themselves. But you want to make sure it's for inexperienced bicyclists or small bicyclists, and also pedestrians. Yeah. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, okay. So I think we keep that that strip as purple. I think that's what we just convinced ourselves of. And, make, and it's not going to extend further south. No, then, but make like that down further, to... further south um, actually should be um, re uh, red uh, and not red. blue. Yeah, red, not, not blue, right? Yeah, and it currently is. I think. Okay, so um, so that's good. So let's. Um, we need to go west. <laughs> more west. And just a bit, yeah. Let's center us on um, triangle there. Yep, perfect. So um, the length oh, of I'm triangle, to, I think, should be like red and blue. Clearly. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to maybe stop us here okay. because there's one more thing I want to do before before sure. we go in, in, in ten minutes. I think ten minutes is enough time, but um, this is going well. Um, just one thing, I think we all agree that where those two um, small blue things are right now on triangle, the one um, closer to the university and the one that connects to Main Street, those should really be purple. Purple, I mean, yeah. It should be purple. Access. It's in oh, town. Yes. The whole thing and, should be purple. And where it connects to that light down on Main Street. Right. Those should be purple. And I guess, yeah. I mean, well, that's and, pretty clear. It's just a clear gap. And our... fearing is a walking route, but... I don't, yeah, I guess I we're not. Those, right? we yes. we'll stop there. No. Okay. Thank you. All right. And then the, and the red paths to the cemetery, of course, wouldn't be on this map. Yes. Um, good. Thank you. So, and but we'll, we'll, we'll do this again next time. I promise. Yeah. Um, I just, just, uh, 
I just did want to touch, oh, Darcy. Yeah, I just have a quick question about the mapping and, um, because I haven't been involved in the previous conversations and I just wondered like what what is what is the end goal or what is the product or what is happening with that plan? Yeah, and so this is our our um, aspirational bike and pedestrian network in town. So the the idea is to um, have a, a map to go to when we need when we have funding and we want to continue to connect the networks that we currently have the current yeah. the structure that we have in town to um, have it have have a map to go back to and say yes we need to have a a, a walking a, a sidewalk and a um, and a bike path here when we redo this road and this is yeah, part of our bicycle and pedestrian network plan that the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission worked with us on starting I think in 2018 and they finished the written part of the plan but they never finished the maps so this group is finishing the maps. So we're connecting all of the networks and we're making networks in town that connect to all the town centers and the schools. Um, and so and, I mean, and it can be it's effectively the conclusion and then recommendations that we're tagging on to the at the end of this report that that uh, Christine did for us. So that that's and and we intend to use it to you know when we make recommendations that it's going to be based on that. And I mean, as Christine mentioned, when it's done, it would be nice if you could, you know, share it with TSO or. No. Absolutely. That's it. We're trying to get it to the point where it, it's it's we feel it's suitable for that. It's it's not quite ready for that now. Yeah, that makes sense. That's well, and also to have the council adopt the plan, right, and sort of endorse the ideas in the plan, and then the network could be the basis for some of like the prioritization and so on. Yeah, I mean that would be because would we've be, identified those places as like part of the network. Yeah. I mean, it is, a, it can be a little confusing to what Chris said earlier is that like some of what's in, we're identifying as a red and blue in the network are places that are already strong for pedestrians and bicyclists of all levels and some are not, but we are identifying so, that they are critical parts of the bike in the pet network. Yeah. And so what, what we aren't seeing is the other 50 pages of the report that, that, you know, enumerate where places are good, where they're bad and, and, when something is missing, what it might look like when it gets connected. So that that's that's all in there. This is just the the uh, the conclusion, basically, mm -hmm. that we're trying to put a picture to. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, thank you. Um, so, what I wanted to just just do, um, and, and really, as far as getting it's uh, for getting ready um, for our next session, when when I'm hoping that we can have. Uh, we can spend a lot of time on thinking about what we might recommend for uh, the Pomeroy Village Center project. Um, I just wanted to start thinking about what the criteria, what the form and what the criteria might be that we uh, will want to be thinking about as we put together our suggestion. Last time, uh, I can't remember who mentioned it, um, somebody came up with the idea, which I think is very good, of, of rather than saying we want it to be a roundabout or we want it to be a rectangular intersection, here is what needs to be considered in making that recommendation. Here's why this is better and why that might be better. And um, let, that, let that be uh, the basis of what we suggest. Um, so, um, so I wanted to put that out there to see if that, that first of all, is, is makes sense and what we would want to do. Um, I would allow that at the end of that conversation, we might say, ha, huh, when we've taken looked at all of this, the decision is obvious that it's going to be round. We might want to include that, but that wouldn't be the, necessarily the object. Well, uh, does that make well, sense? And, and yes, Tracy. Well, I mean, so, I mean, you know, similar to what's been discussed for the format of the public forum on the plan. I mean, I think just hearing from us, just like from the public about what are the key issues there now, 
And I felt like, I mean, there's some good bullet points in the presentation that the town has put together and given in terms of if we have this design, it will enhance these things. And if we have this design, it will enhance these things. Like we'll address those different issues. So I feel like we could well, build some of our comments around those and then also just about what we think is also missing or is not being addressed in those right. lists. And so what will happen, uh, I, you know, I think, I think you're exactly right, Tracy. So what, what might happen <clears throat> is that a specific issue that we've heard about that we know relates to this intersection will get onto the pro and con list of our, you know, our analysis of the comparison between the two types of intersections. So Darcy. Yeah, you know, I, just would, I, I just would say that since you all are the experts um, on transportation and um, you know the district five residents are are, are not <laughs> and you know we we had a district five meeting where uh, I did you attend that one Aaron um, where we brought up the issue and you know I, you know, I, I think there may have been two and I went to, I did go to one well the first one uh, there was just a lot of residents, um, just expressing yeah. um, just surprise, you know, or like, why would we have a roundabout and so on. So I think to the extent that you know a lot about roundabouts, and of course Guilford does too, it makes sense to me to really help people understand why they're being used now, you know, like or at, why you at, sit yeah. at you know, just an intersection of two streets. Why? Because people need to hear that. They need to understand why why it's good. Yeah. Um, you know, what are the what are the pros? Because um, because people don't understand it. Yeah. And, um, and, yeah, and I would hope that in doing that, that we we could connect with. We we know what the concerns are. We know what the expectations are. And that we might we might be able to connect those two uh, sensibly, and that would be that would be I think that's 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 what I hope will, will happen. So, uh, Eve, um, Tracy, I have a feeling that you have read or studied a fair bit or heard a bit fair bit about like why roundabouts are advantageous. Could you make a bulleted list that's like a user friendly list for us to sort of look at and. Yeah, like to upsize a month worth of classes into what <laughs> end of <the> page. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are a number of studies that talk about the benefits. Yes. And I and mean, I think does. even Evan Ross, like mentioned at one council meeting that he had done research on how they can reduce emissions, right, if they cut down on traffic congestion. So, um, so yeah, but, it, I mean, it, one it thing I was one thing I would like us, to, I mean, because it's come up in the council meetings and other forums as well is you know what one, one thing i heard when i was listening on the council discussions about this project is people who were concerned um including myra who's here in the audience about um the safety at the triangle street roundabout and i think that's that's one reason i brought that up last time and so if we can talk about some of the challenges that exist the way it is now um then maybe those are things that could be an area just to put people's well, mind at ease if about what would be different if there were to be a roundabout um, yeah. at so, particular safety yeah, so, concerns. Yeah, I mean, the reason I wanted to have this discussion today to sort of is to, so that we, we now know how we wanna set the table in two weeks. And so definitely the Triangle Street considerations, the bullet list, I'm hopeful that, that you can put together as Eve is suggesting. Um, and all those other things that, that we've all been thinking about along the way that we can begin to build that into a, a decision matrix or whatever we want to call it. Uh, Eve. So um, I haven't seen um, what has been put together, I think from the, the consultants, uh, at least not if there's anything updated, but do we have any kind of streetscape image of oh, zero? Um, I, I I think we really need a streetscape image of what each option would look like. Like, so not just engineering, you know, top down view, but a streetscape image. 
So that that would be that might be a, one of the recommendations that we make and to solve some of the issues that we uncover next time. Yeah. I, mean, Gilford, I guess that Gilford was trying to get a word in edgewise there. I just want to get back to what Chris says. I, I think <clears throat> the discussion we had today, and I think it's going to be passed on to the TSO tomorrow, is that the goal should be more to listen to the people in the neighborhood talk about what they think their problems are um, and what they do in the intersection. Do, do people want to cross the intersection? Do people go here? Do people go there? Do you cross at the intersection or do you need to cross other places? Um, what are your problems? Is it the fact that when the light's green, people fly through and you really can't, you're uncomfortable with that? Do you want to slow traffic down? Do you want to speed traffic up? Um, th those are the, <clears throat> I, I'm, I think that's kind of what the discussion might start with because we're just jumping in and saying these are the two solutions when we really don't know what people want or think they have a problem with. Yeah, so so I think what 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 that's very important. You're you're right, Gilford, in that there's not two answers here. Each each version has a number of things that can be done to it to make it different. Um, so good. Sorry, I just got bumped by <laughs> Zoom, but I have a question. Yes, Mark. I have can't see your hand. I just see your traffic control. But okay. Oh, sorry. Ahead. Yeah. Well, you don't want to see me right now. I've got like a big old head wrap thing on. I've got. Um, I'm having a a uh, skin graft on my head next week, so. Oh. Fun oh. Stuff. But uh, I mean, are there <laughs> have there been an actual measurable in has there been an actual measurable increase in the number of road traffic accidents or uh, you know pedestrian accidents at the triangle intersection, the roundabout? Have we seen an increase in that number, or have we? Is it just a an a, a an appearance of such an event? Jason such an event? had Jason did a rundown, and there has not been an increase, and there really haven't been very many accidents at all. When you right. see Jason's chart of what's happened there, you go like, "Oh, it doesn't look like much of." But I guess if you read some of the literature, right, one argument would be for why there's no accidents like crashes or injuries there is that also that people are avoiding the intersection right so sometimes like conditions are so unfavorable that people won't go there like i know myra had mentioned that um the person that she's spoken with from the trainer from the mass commission for the blind who does travel training you know and walking with people about like routes that they can safely take that he does not advise that anybody go through that intersection as yeah. a pedestrian. So it's, also, it's interesting that that's a, it's a compromised intersection as well. <clears throat> the slip lane and there's some things that are very awkward about it because of the angle. So yes, and, and so and, Marcus, I think the answer is yes, that, that there are data that we might want to collect. That's one, there are other intersections in town that have been converted to roundabouts that we, we might be able to um, suggest or maybe get some some before and after well, data. I mean, yeah. Well, in the Triangle Street one, it's complicated just because it's like at those angles and stuff. Too. Yeah, right. So I see you, Eve. We're going to get to you, Eve. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I'm confused because I thought, uh, Guilford, I totally appreciated what you're just saying. We need to collect, um, you know, a sense of what's going on. I would add that we need to not only think about what's happening now, but what we want it to be. Um, but I thought you had said that, or Darcy had said, or someone had said that that the only thing we're going to really weigh in on uh, is whether it's going to be a roundabout or a traffic light intersection. That's going to be the first decision. Did I mishear that? That's just the decision that that TSO has to recommend to the council. Because it so, seems to me that Myra, maybe you've been what, patient. what we're oh, sorry. hearing what maybe what we're hearing from this conversation is that we're actually that's not the first decision you know the first the earlier decisions are like what is this intersection going to be for you know who is it going to who's it going to serve what problems is it going to solve what kind of you know is it going to be how many bicyclists how many pedestrians we know there aren't that many using it now how many do we want to bring so, and, and it's only when we have those kinds of decisions do we then you know know how to judge well, that, that's what we're going to explore is, is, is I mean, that, I think that's the intention. That's what I had intended for next time is to 
understand how we get to that fundamental principal decision. Once that's taken, of course, there's a whole other set of design that has to happen. But I think that, uh, yes, I think you heard correctly that, and, and Darcy says, yes, it's, it's the question, is it round or square? And, um, and I'm, I want us, the TAC, to you know, provide input into that decision. And, um, and like I said, we might take the decision, we might be able to say it's obvious one way or the other, but that wouldn't be the goal. The goal would be to understand how to help get to that point. So uh, Myra, you've been very patient there. Um, uh, <clears throat> And I, I'm hopeful you haven't gone away out of out of disgust for being so Hi. late. Sorry. Uh, first, thank you, Aaron, for letting me speak. This isn't public comment, and I really appreciate it. Um, I guess one thing I think what Eve just said is really important for you to think about. One thing she said at the last meeting, I think, was really good, which is, what's the community feel? What does each kind of intersection do to the sense of community in a village center? So I think that's something really to think about. I thought it was a great comment. The one thing that I want to say, and I know it's, um, I just want to make sure that it's on the table, is that a week ago, a little more than a week ago, I was on a Zoom call as a part of the American Council for the Blind Legislative Forum, and I got my hand up in time to get called on to ask the executive director of the uh, access board, the United States Access Board, a question about the access of, you know, the rules for accessibility of roundabouts. And he asked me to send him an email, which I did. And he wrote back to me and sent me some information, which is that currently there are no requirements for there to be any kind of pedestrian, um, uh, audible pedestrian activated signals, but that there soon will be. Um, and that the reason there aren't is that uh, over in the Trump administration, every new regulation had to be supplanted by the removal of two regulations. So they really didn't do any kind of new regulation, but they're very aware and they have recommendations um, for the recommendations that they would like to put in for the safety of roundabouts, which are becoming a big issue and became an issue before they really grappled with that in advance. So I just want you to know that there will be not in time for this project. So the town would be well within its legal rights not to deal with this. But uh, I would hope that the town will consider dealing with the fact that uh, even if you choose a roundabout because of all the reasons that you're interested for Pro, you know, for the community feel, for the traffic flow, for whatever you want, that you include pedestrian activated audible signals, wayfinding, whatever is going to be in the regulations. And obviously the recommendations are subject to change, but there will be recommendations. I sent them to Aaron. I sent them to Maureen Pollack, who's the DAAC liaison. She told me that she sent them to Chris and to uh, and to Dave Zomek, I guess. And I think I also sent them to Darcy. So I know there are people who have the regulations. I don't know if anybody has been able, maybe I sent them to Tracy too. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It, I don't know if people have had a chance to look at them. And I don't know if you care to look at them because they're not going to be in force for this project in the time that you're going to do it. But I certainly hope that you will look at it because there is definite awareness that roundabouts have, have major safety issues for visually impaired people, for blind people, for people who cross slowly, uh, for any reason. And that if and when you when you just rely upon the judgment of your eyes to cross a street, it works for a lot of people and it doesn't work for other people. That's you know, I mean, anybody who wants to see the regulations, Aaron, you have them, right? I, I, I you did send me something, and I'm, and actually, I'm, I'm quickly looking through my, my. Uh, yes, I, I do. I think this is it. Yes. Would so, you send this to us, Aaron? I will, and and certainly it will be. It, it was intended to be part of our discussion next time, as we think about the pros and cons of all that. So thank, thank you, Myra. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for letting me speak. I know it was not the appropriate time.
So no, 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 not at no, all. We're, we're pretty casual. We let yeah. people say the chair. I, I got to talk to the chair about that at some point. <laughs> Any event. So, so, so thank you very much. Um, Bruce. Uh, are we all concluded for the evening? So, <laughs> no, because Tracy has to get a word in. Yes, Tracy. No, sorry. I just had a question about like some, it seems like at some of our meetings, like we're, we're losing things that we work on and we're not finishing them. So like at the last two meetings, right, we've talked about that letter about Route 9 and Hadley. I mean, so when we have these like to do items, can we keep them on the agenda and just make sure that we wrap them up or or designate yes. a member to like draft a letter or something. I just, you know, it's like we have those really great discussions. I just don't want to lose those items. Yep, we, we can do that. I, I've, I've been working on those and um, well, I'll, I'll put on the agenda for next time. Oh, both so or do we, I mean, is there a, or, so a letter is going to be sent? So is that the, the letter is going to be sent and I'm going to send a copy of its body around to, to all of you so that you can see it. Um, I've, I've been trying to figure out um, where it should go. Um, and I think I got to the bottom of that today, um, basically to the same place that the letter would have gone to from Hadley, so. Oh, but you're, we're sending it right to DOT, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Oh, you're and um, and I was just wondering too, I mean, just it had come up earlier as well. And I think it was one of Darcy's recommendations um, that like, you know, because the TSO wants to know what tax doing and sometimes the council says, hey, what's TAC doing? And we had talked about giving TSO and the council some information about TAC, like both that prioritization, that priority list of projects and like some other details or maybe like writing a quick memo or something. Um, yeah, so I, that's something that I'm happy to help work on if we want to do that, but just periodically, it seems like just to check in and say, hey, but. Yeah. Eve? You. So I wanted to make a suggestion that because Tracy is such an amazing detail person <laughs> that you on the agenda with her each week before you finalize it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I will, I will, I will take that into, <laughs> into council. Um, so, uh, okay. Thank you, Tracy. Bruce. I move to adjourn. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye. We'll Bye. see you in two weeks. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gilbert and Amber. Thank you.